Good morning, everyone. Today's pick a card. We're going to do a little soul energy assessment. Go ahead and focus on which card piles you would like. We're going to be reading from Legendary Ladies and Gods and Titans, and I will timestamp below. You can pick one or both. I'll give you a moment. Okay, if you pick the in. For our feminine energy, we have best, pleasure, origin, Egyptian. You may be in need of some serious self-care, and the goddess best is with you. As the ruler of sex, magic, and pleasure, she helps you see and reignite all those aspects in your life. Time to indulge. And for our masculine, we have Anubis, but he's in the reverse for the shadow side. Protection. I'll leave him upright, but I'll read the whole thing for you. So err on the shadow side. Grief and suffering are a natural part of life. Know that you are loved and protected at this time and at all times. When you go down into the womb-like environment of many tombs in ancient Egypt, the gods seem to still live and breathe in frescoes upon the earthen walls. Among them, almost always, is the dark, majestic jackal head signifying the presence of Anubis, god of the underworld and mummification. To our eyes, perhaps, Anubis looks fearsome, but this is not the truth. Yes, jackals do move amongst the graveyards and clear the dead, but this jackal god takes great care of the tender new souls who have passed into the next world, the afterlife. After preparing them by guiding the embalmer's hands, Anubis travels with the dead to have their souls weighed against Ma'at, the law, as recorded in the Book of the Dead. When the cult of the god Osiris grew stronger in the later Middle Kingdom, Osiris took many of Anubis's jobs as caretaker and protector of the dead, and thereafter the myths about him became more focused on specific embalming methods and mummification processes. The care and effectiveness with which the mummification process was enacted is still a marvel today. The priests of the funerary rites would place a sacred mask of Anubis upon, the, on, upon their faces when conducting the mummification, enabling the deceased to momentarily become the god himself during the preparation. Call upon Anubis when you or others are affected by death. Allow Anubis to relieve your grief and suffering. Know that the person who has died has a soul which Anubis is carefully protecting and watching over. The shadow side of this card, death is something that will inevitably happen to all of us, sooner or later. The fear of losing our life, of death itself, is still very strong. Should our fear of the unknown, the fear of death itself, become so strong that it dictates our life, this is a limiting force. Death is a part of life and should be seen as such. If you chose Yang, you have Pele determination, as I knock everything over, haha, <laughs> Pele, origin, Hawaiian, temptuous goddess of fire and volcanoes, Pele is guiding you to find your own path and step in with determination. You'll find that you can do anything you set your mind to. And for our masculine, we have Nuwada, perfection. Love and appreciate your uniqueness and your imperfections. Question the cost of chasing perfection. Delight in who you are. The story of Nuwada is a very ancient one that has woven itself into different themes and variants over different times and places. One thing that stays constant is his exploration of suitability and perfection. Nuwada was the king of Aaron, one of the Herwith Herwith Tuatha Dedanan, people of the goddess Danu. 
which was one of the mythical races of Ireland. According to myth, these early Celtic times were far more peaceful, with bloody battles being waged continuously. During one of the major battles, the Danans, led by Nuada and his Sword of Invincibility, defeated the Furbogs. The fighting was so bloody and fierce, though that Nuada lost his right hand. This was a disaster for Nuada, as there was an ancient law that precluded anyone who was not whole to the throne. His mutilation lost him his rule, even though he was victorious, just, and benevolent leader. The Danans then chose Bres as their leader. Bres, as though a skilled fighter, had little of Nuada's wisdom and fairness, and soon the kingdom felt the effects of this discordant king. Nuada's brother, the physician Dian Ketch, fashioned a magical silver hand to replace the one that he had lost. Not only functional, the silver hand was beautiful too. Nuwada became Nuwada Ergolamic. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> Nuwada of the Silver Hand. Again, worthy amongst his people, and Bres stepped down from the throne. Today, more than ever, we chase perfection. But what it is? It, what is it really? We often look to external perfection as necessary to success. The quest for youth and a perfect body has thrown us towards a pre predilection for injecting ourselves with face-numbing poisons and surgically enhancing the features that we feel aren't ideal. When did the fact that we have healthy, strong, functional bodies become so not enough? We are born with everything we need to be what it is that we are meant to be. We are born perfectly imperfect. Our uniqueness is for a reason. Nuada reminds us to be perfect at our job or purpose. We need not pursue some unattainable and false ideal. Perfection is a subjective judgment and not an objective reality. In Nuada's case, he was the best leader. His missing hand did not take away from his great leadership qualities. There you go, guys. Have a great day.